to Foxhall Heath, the home of Ipswich Speedway, and tonight's the last meeting of the season, the Tim Woodward-sponsored 16-lap classic. This always a very popular event with the Foxhall public. Eight riders, 16 laps, what a finale that could be. And tonight, of course, we've got that great pole, Thomas Golab, in the lineup. A real coup for the Ipswich management to get Thomas here riding tonight. We'll look forward to how he does, and we'll look forward to the rest of the meeting. Now we do start by taking a look at the lineups. At number one, it is Steve Johnson, who's proved to be such a popular figure here at Long Eaton this season. At number two, it is Scotty Nichols. He's thrilled the crowds when his engines have been performing correctly. Has more, had more than his fair share of engine problems. At number three, Shane Parker. He really is absolutely flying at the moment. And we're pretty cold, as you can see. And at number four, that looks like Chris Louie. And with actual fact, no it is not, Thomas Gollop, well, all, he, all he brought over was an engine and his boots. And well, I think Chris had to lend him the rest of the gear, as you can see. At number five, it is Mark Lemon. At number six, in fact, that's number seven, that is Shane Bowes. The rider's getting ready to come out on the parade truck. Savalas Clouting, he rides at number 11. he do well to make it through to the... Eight man 16 lap final, and well, that is Mark Lorem at number eight. Chris Louie at number 10. We'll start as one of the favourites here. Joe Screen, who came second in the Blue Riband last night at Paul, a meeting won by Craig Boyce. Boyce, he's not here this evening. Jeremy Doncaster is, though. He's at number nine. And well, Kelvin Tatum, he also rode in the Blue Riband, but not with too much success. And well, I don't think Hubble Bubble's in it. Steve Johnson, he certainly is, we've already seen. So the riders at the start line then for heat number one. And well, before the meeting, we had a few words with some of the riders in contention here this evening, starting with Mark Lemon. Tell me, Mark Lemon, Mark. 16 lap at a night. Have you ever taken part in one before? Uh, no, this is my first uh, time at 16 laps, so um, I'm looking forward to it. A bit optimistic, and uh, these two sets of gates uh, still have got me a bit bemused at the moment. And have you heard the riders talk about it? It's quite a, it's quite an event, I think, the final 16 laps itself. Yeah, true. I've, obviously, I've seen a few videos in the past of Phil Crump when he won it in his day, and I actually have. Phil's old mechanic with me tonight, so hopefully he can bring me some luck and um, who knows. And of course Jason Crump actually was the winner last year here. He uh, thoroughly enjoyed himself, so that's good news for you. Well, I guess so, and uh, hopefully we can um, carry on the Madura tra uh, tradition. And of course, season's come to an end now, Mark. How's it gone for you? Yeah, it's been very up and down. I had a lot of injuries mid-season, but uh, right now my setups are working really good. I'm starting to be a little bit more 100% fit, and uh, the results are coming. It's kind of like, you know, a bit too bad the season's ending. And of course, going back to night, Thomas Golab here. Should be quite interesting to see how he goes. Uh, Thomas who? <laughs> You're interested to see how Thomas might go in tonight? Uh, not really. I mean, there's going to be 12 other riders out there capable of winning it. And, uh, he's just one of them. So when I get on the race track, it's not who's in the race. It's just race the race. Well, you got lined up for the winter. Going home? Yeah, I fly out Monday. Uh, I've got an Australian long track final on Saturday week. Uh, and then I've got David Tatt theories and obviously a state and Australian final, which, you know, obviously I'm going home with the uh, ambitions to win that and uh, hopefully carry that on for a good uh, season next year. And back in England next year? I think so. Um, I haven't spoke to anybody about next year, but uh, I want to come back. Lovely. Thanks very much, Martin. Good luck. No worries, mate. Thanks, mate. I've got to be Mark Lauren, Mark 16 lap tonight here at Ipswich. Do you like these events? No. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's good fun, it's something different. 16 laps a little bit too much really, but um, yeah, I've done the right in it before, so see yeah, how it goes tonight. And of course, come the end of the season now, British champion, hasn't been a bad one for you, has it? And of course the Grand Prix as well. No, it's been a good year for me personally, yeah, um, good year for Bradford, so um, all in all, yeah, uh, bloody good year. And of course the Grand Prix particularly is important to you. You must have been disappointed about Chris though, and you know, not being there with you, but it went well for you. Yeah, it's very disappointing for Chris, you know, I mean, he's uh, his elite league form and just about everywhere else been, you know, absolutely A1, it's just been quite, you know, make the break and it's so difficult, you know, but uh, I'm sure he'll be back. And going back this 16 lap tonight, um, have you ridden in many before? Yeah, I've ridden in quite a few before. I nearly won one once and my fork leg broke on the last corner. But um, yeah, I've ridden in quite a few before. They're normally quite enjoyable. And if you start off the back grid, 
what on earth do you think about? Nothing really, you just sort of go around and keep going and wait for people to get a bit tired. That's about it really. Many modifications for your bike come the 16 lap final? I haven't done anything, no, so hopefully it'll be alright. Hopefully I won't run out of fuel. Lovely, thanks very much Mark. Alright mate, cheers. I got me Scott Niggles, Scott, 16 lap tonight. Have you ridden any? Yeah, I've done one last year, so it's a good meeting to come in. It's, you get to a 16 lapper and absolutely kills you. I didn't make it all the way last year. My bike stopped on the about the same lap, I think, so I was knackered anyway. Were you on the front grid or the back grid? I was on the front grid. <laughs> so you've got to get to the back grid this time, then what do you think about? Uh, well, you just panic when you get to the first turn, I guess, but obviously the back grid's the place to be if you want to get you know a rostrum spot at the end of the night but just good to take part in it. Of course end of season now Scott, how's it gone? A bit up and down really, I've been sort of a bit disappointed really, I mean I've had a lot of problems this year more than you know I would have liked but you know I've tried to sort them out but they just seem to keep coming back so you know on that side of things disappointed but I'm pleased with some you know I have to pick out the good bits and you know I've had some good meetings, I've been pleased with some of the meetings I've had and some of the performances so all in all, it's just been a season to try and reflect and pick out the best bits from. And of course, this time of year you get a lot of talk about where you're going to be, what you're going to do. You'll still be here next year, of course, won't you? <laughs> Caught in the papers, I ain't. <laughs> I mean, I'd, it'd be nice for somebody to actually speak to me, you know. I mean, there's been all this speculation going on and I haven't actually spoken to anyone, so... Uh, who knows, so we'll just have to see what happens. But you've enjoyed your year here at Ipswich? Yeah, I've enjoyed my year. Obviously, things didn't go as good as I wanted to, but... Um, no, we'll have to see what happens. I'd like to have been here next year, but like I say, the way the papers are saying, I'm not, but we'll just see what happens. I'm sure the Ipswich fans are there where you will certainly be here next year. I hope so, yeah. And finally on to tonight, what are your tactics? <laughs> I don't have tactics. <laughs> I mean, it's the end of the season, you just go out and do your best in every race. Obviously, if you want to win a meeting, you've got to do, you've got to give you your best in every race, so that's what I'll be going out for. Lovely, best of luck, Sky. Okay, cheers, thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, good to hear from Scotty, Mark, and well, two Marks, of course. So the riders well, are out at the start line then for heat number one. We've got 12 qualifying races, and then a consolation final for the bottom four. And then the other eight will go through to the 16-lap classic final as heat number one gets underway. Steve Johnson, Scott Nichols, Shane Parker, and Thomas Gollub making his bow here in British Speedway other than a Grand Prix and well Gollum in fact has come through in a third he's come through in a second in thrilling fashion and well now he's challenging Scotty Nichols for the lead it is Scott who's out in front from Gollum who's got some lift and Shane Parker well, he's trying to come through on the inside of Thomas and it looks like he may have done so but certainly through in the crowds in the first race indeed Shane Parker has come through into second spot Steve Johnson well, surprisingly, he's at the back of all someone's got to be. A top-class field here has been gathered for this tw Tim Woodward-sponsored 16-lap classic, a lap to go. And it looks as if Scotty Nichols is going to get a victory from Shane Parker in second place. Gollard back in third now. It is great to see him here at Foxall Heath, of course. Brought through his connection with Magda Louie. And with Scotty wins heat number one. Second place goes to Parker. First spot to... Golub 60.7, that was Scotty's winning time, pulling a big wheel as you can see, and well, we can see again how Shane Parker managed to find a way back past the Polish champion into second place, 60.7, as we say that was Scott's winning time. So the riders coming out then for heat number two, and this one, well it sees Mark Lemon coming out in red, in blue it is Shane Bowes in white, Joe Screen and in yellow and black it is Mark Lorem, Mark who failed it to make it through to the Blue Band final last night down at Wimborne Road. I mean, if we say one by Craig Boyce, Joe Screen in second, Mark Lemon did well to finish in third ahead of Marvin Cox. So heat number two then, about to get underway. Each of these riders has four qualifying races as the race starts. And it looks like it's the rider in white, Joe Screen, who's made the gate. Indeed he has, he leads away from Mark, Le Mark Lorem in second place. Mark Lemon and Shane Bowes battling it out for the odd point, but it is 
Joe Screen, who leads the way from his good friend Mark Lorem in second place. Around second course, who's such a exciting winner of the Danish Grand Prix in Boyens last month. He's holding on to second place. Mark Lorem, where he went out wide on that first and second bend of the second lap, he's still just holding on to third spot ahead of Shane Bowes. It is the screen machine who leads the way. Mark Lemon still holding on to third place. Shane Bowes with these had plenty of guest bookings this season with his average being around about the four and a half point mark. And it is Joe Screen who's going to win his first race. He takes the checkered flag. Two points goes to Mark Lorem. One to Mark Lemon. 61.1 was the winning time. Pretty straightforward victory for the Bradford start in heat number two. Riders out then for heat number three, and this one where it sees Chris Louie coming out of gate number one, off gate number two, it is Savalas Kelting, of gate number three, Jeremy Doncaster, and from the outside, Kelvin Tatum. So this completes the first set of rides then. Louis, previous winner of this title, has been run ever since the 70s as heat number three gets underway and it is Luby who's made a good start from the inside and he leads the way, the rider in blue that is Savalas Kelton where he's come through in the second place ahead of Jeremy Doncaster in third and uh, Kelvin Tatum, certainly not the trapper he was of two or three seasons ago, he's at the back Although he has been suffering with a bit of a back injury of late, has Kelvin. Meanwhile, out in front, it is Chris Louis who leads the way from Savalis. Of course, an Ipswich asset, having ridden on loan to Paul this year. Holding on to second spot, Luby it is though, who's heading towards victory. Out to next year's Grand Prix series. Now where it'll certainly be poor a series without him, although there is talk that it may be extended to 24, in which case Luby will be through. Have to wait and see what happens during the winter with those recommendations by Ollie Olsen, the GP Supremo. 60.8 was Chris's winning time in heat number three. Second place goes to Cloutin, if you're pleased with that. Third spot, the Doncaster. Tatum at the back. So the riders out then for heat number four and this one where it sees Thomas Gollum coming out of gate number one, of gate number two it is Steve Johnson of gate number three we got Mark Lemon and from the outside it is Jeremy Doncaster So has Gollop learnt from his first ride? Well it certainly looks as if he has because he leads the way from John Owen in second place, Donkey in third with Mark Lemon at the back but it is the world number three who leads the way, Thomas Gollop is out in front from Steve Johnson in second place and Jeremy Doncaster where he's holding on to third ahead of Mark Lemon. Well, there is talk that he may be riding in Britain next year. And it certainly will be great to see the likes of him back in British Speedway. Also talk, of course, of Henke Gustafsson coming back. Hopefully Tony Rickardson will be back as well with the SGR witches. Couldn't make this meeting here this evening. Having a family commitment back in Sweden. 
but Thomas Gollop, he has made it and he's going to win heat number four. Second place goes to the rider in blue, that is Steve Johnson. First spot to Jeremy Doncaster. Mark Lemon, well, he's struggling to make it through. He scored just one point so far. And well, who'd have thought it, seeing the name of Thomas Gollop up in lights, as it were, at the Foxhall Heath Stadium. But he certainly is here, and he has won heat number four. Magda Louie and John Louie cheering him home. Oh, well, you can see some of the crowd here this evening. They really have turned out in force to see the Polish sensation. Heat number five is about to get underway. The 1997 Tim Woodward sponsored 16 lap classic. And this one, well, it sees Mark Lauren coming out in red off gate number one, off gate two. It is Chris Louie, winner first time out off gate three, Scott Nichols. So was he. And from the outside is Joe Screen. And well, so was Screeny, a race winner. So this one could be a good heat of speedway. Mark Lauren, of course, he had a second place in his first ride. And well, who can forget the great battle those two riders had in the British final? earlier this year in the runoff for it really was one of the all-time classics so Ray Chinnery just getting the riders up into line then for heat number five as the race gets underway and when it looks like Louis has made a good start for off gate number two, he has, but so's Joe Screen from four, and he's come across to lead the way. And uh, Chris Louis, well, he's back in second place. Mark Lauren in third, Scott Nichols at the back. Well, of course, the all four riders, English, born and bred, and they all represented England in the recent test matches where they defeated the USA at Wimble Road by a couple of points, but then went down to a 10 point defeat against the Aussies at Eastbourne to lose the Ashes series a couple of weeks ago Joe Screen it is though who's leading the way in heat number 5 this is going to put him unbeaten after his opening two rides he was unbeaten or he was top qualifier rather last night at Paul and well that was the Grand Prix style final and he had first pick of gates but it was Craig Boyce who came out on top, but Screeny has just in heat number five, winning it from Chris Louis, a close finish. Third spot goes to Mark, to Scotty Nichols, in fact, getting the better of Mark Lauren. 60.9. That was Joe's winning time. Two wins out of two for the screen machine. Riders out then for heat number six, and this one where it sees Savalas Calvin coming out of gate number one, of gate number two, it is Calvin Tatum, off gate number three, Shane Bowes, and from the outside, we've got Shane Parker. So Clouton, well, he started off with a second place, it was a good ride by him, Calvin Tatum. He had a last spot, Shane Bowes. He also had a last. Shane Parker, well, he had a second place. So it's going to be the first race win for one of these riders. Who's it going to be as they come out at the start? Well, Kelvin Tatum has made a good gate. And he leads away from Shane Bowes in second place. Savalas Clouton in third with Shane Parker at the back, somewhat surprisingly. But Kelvin Tatum it is who leads the way from Bowes in second place. Clouting. Back in third. And there's a few Kings in fans come down to support Shane here this evening. He really has been in quite excellent form for Kings in. Scored a maximum last night for them in there. Craven Shield semi-final first leg against Eastbourne. As the Knights open up a 17-point lead to take the Island and it may not be enough. Good battle going on for second place here between Shane Bowes and Savalas Clouton, it looks like Clouton may have come through but Bowes will he's fighting back again on the outside cracking speedway heat in race number six Kelvin Tatum, well he's going to get the win 
and who's going to get second place? It's very close to these. They cross the line, and we look like Shane Bowes when he just holds on to second spot. But a good speedway heat that one. Savalas counting back in third. Shane Parker a surprising last 61.4. Kelvin's winning time in heat number six. So the riders out then for heat number seven. And this one, well it sees Jeremy Doncaster coming out of gate number one, of gate number two. It is Joe Screen of gate number three. We've got Steve Johnson and from the outside it is Savalas Clouting, so two on the trot for sale. He's scored three points so far, Jono, he's on two. Joe Screen of course, but he's unbeaten, he's on six. Jeremy Doncaster, well he's on two, heat number seven gets underway, and where's they going to that first corner? It looks as if it's the rider in red, that is Jeremy Doncaster who's made the best start and he leads away from Steve Johnson in second place, Joe Screen, well he's only back in third, with Savalas Kenton at the back in heat number seven, but here comes Jono on the inside of Jeremy Doncaster, he's trying to find a way past it, it looks as if he's managed to do so, indeed he has, he leads the way, and Joe Screen, well, he's also found a way through into second place ahead of Doncaster with Savalas counting at the back. But Steve Johnson, well, he knows he needs some points to if he's going to make it through to the 16 lap classic final. And well, he's leading the way in heat number seven. Joe Screen, well, he's assured of being there already after a couple of race wins, but he wants to be on that back grid where you collect a couple of extra points. And well, he's in second place at the moment, but Steve Johnson it is who's going to come round to take the checker flag. He wins it from Joe Screen. Third spot goes to Jeremy Doncaster with Savalas counting at the back. He's struggling now to make the final. 61.3 was Jono's winning time. And well, we can take another look and see how he found a way through into the lead, getting the better of Jeremy Doncaster with. Joe Screen also finding a way past into second spot. Steve winning his first race of the meeting. So riders out at the line then for heat number eight. And this one, well it sees Kelvin Tatum coming out of gate number one. He scored three points so far off gate number two. It is Mark Lemon. He's struggling on just one off gate number three, Thomas Gollub. Third place and then that win in his next ride. And from the outside, it is Scotty Nichols who's started off with a win and has got four points from his two outings so far. So heat number eight then is about to get underway. as the riders come out of the start and it looks like Gollop may have made it to that first turn in front indeed he has from Scott Nichols coming through in the second place with Kelvin Tatum in third and Mark Lemon at the back but Gollop showing his class there on the, on the first bend he leads the way had a good season in Poland Big Gosh's team winning the Polish Championship this season And he's leading the way after a couple of laps here in this Tim Woodward sponsored 16 lap classic. Scott Nichols in second place, Kelvin Tatum being dropped a bit in this one. He's back in third with Mark Lemon. Well, he certainly doesn't look as if he's going to make it through to the 16 lap classic final. Uh, one lap to go, and Gollop will he's almost a shorter book in his place in it. He leads the way from Scotty Nichols in second place, and uh, Kelvin Tatum. It's going to be a struggle for him to get through. He's back in third. As Gollop takes the victory, second spot goes to Scott, third place to Kelvin Tatum, 60.4 the winning time. Another win for the pole then in heat number eight, 60.4 his winning time, one of the quickest of the meeting so far. So 
the riders at the start line then for heat number nine. This will complete the third round of rides. And this one will it sees Shane Bowes off gate number one. He's on two points so far off gate number two. Shane Parker, he's also on two. Off gate number three, Mark Lorem, he's also on two. And from the outside, Chris Louis, who's on five points. So the riders, well, some of them, they do meet each other more than once. And let Lorenski get his revenge over Luby in this one. Needs some points in this one if he's going to make it through to the final. As heat number nine, well, it's about to get underway as the riders come out of the start. And well, it looks like Chris Lewis shot across the other three riders to lead the way. Indeed, he does. He's out in front, Mark Long, but he's also trying to come around the outside of Shane Parker, but Parker holding him off at the moment. Shane Bowes it is, who's at the back. But Chris Louis, it meanwhile, he leads the way from Parker in second place, Mark Lorem in third. And well, Shane and Chris, of course, they had an epic race at Saddlebow Road a couple of weeks ago in the Kings in Ipswich. Craven Shield, first round match. It really was an absolute classic, the final race. When Chris managed to find a way past Shane Parker, having been passed by Shane, it wasn't quite enough as Tony Rickardson could only manage third place in that race. And it was Kings in who went through to the semi-finals. But Chris Louis was well, going to get a measure of revenge in heat number nine. He wins it. Second place goes to Parker. Third spot goes to Mark Lorem. It's subdued tonight is Lorevsky with Shane Bowes at the back, 60.7. Chris is winning time, puts his place through into the final after that win in heat number nine, his second of the meeting. The riders out for heat number 10 then and the last rides for each of these competitors. We've got Scott Nichols off gate number one, he's on six points, that should be enough. Mark Lorem, he's off gate number two, he's only on three, so he's struggling. Off gate number three, Calvin Tatum, well so's he, he's on four. And from the outside it is Steve Johnson, he's on five. So the riders they all got something to go for in this one. Heat number ten, Scott Nichols, good racing this one could see him off the back grid in the final as the riders settle down then heat number 10 Mark Lauren well he's desperate for a race victory and it looks like he's anticipated the start there and the red lights have come on immediately by the referee Dave Dowling and we're not surprisingly I think we're going to have a restart of that one Lorenski making a lightning start, gambling somewhat. And well, all four coming back out. Mark gesturing to the referee. What was wrong with that? And we certainly did get a fly up. And so we have the riders back up the start line then for the restart of heat number 10. As it gets underway, and this time it is Scotty Nichols who's made a good start, although he's gone out a little bit wide and Mark Lauren well has he found a way through indeed he has Steve Johnson is in third Calvin Tatum at the back so it looks like Tatum may be missing out on a great place in the final cracking race between these two English stars though as Mark Lauren well he just leads away from Scotty Nichols Steve Johnson in third and Calvin Tatum yes, he's still in last place as Nichols well he tries to find a way past on the inside of Mark Lauren but Lauren finding back again on the outside Cracking speedway heat in race number 10 and now Mark well, he's extended his lead to a couple of two or three bike lengths you can see and with a win here that should be enough to put him through to the final probably start off the front grid though as he leads away going out very wide indeed Scott Nichols in second place Steve Johnson in third John O well, he's going to make it through so will Scott and well so will Mark after that win Calvin Tatum we have to sit and sweat he finishes on four points, may just creep in. We'll have to wait and see on that one, 61.5. That was Mark's winning time, cracking heat with...
Scotty in that one getting the victory and it may be enough to see him through the qualifying heats so the riders out then for heat number 11 and this one which sees Joe Screen off gate number one he's already short of a place in that final off gate number two it is Thomas Gollop, well he's almost there as well practically he's wants to start off the back grid off gate number three Savalas Gloutin he's struggling a bit three points and from the outside it is Shane Bowes who's scored just a couple so far so heat number 11 then is about to get underway the penultimate qualifying race Ray Chinnery just pulling the riders up into the line. It looks like he's satisfied now. He walks away. The referee releases the tapes. And well, in fact, it is the rider in red. That is Joe Screen, who's made a good start. But here comes Gollum trying to find a way past on the outside. And he's just squeezed past Joe Screen. And that certainly shows his class. Not many people manage to find a way past Screeny. But Gollum has done so in heat number 11. He leads the way from Joe in third spot. It is Savalas Clouton. Shane Bowes at the back. That were really was showing the world class of Golubin. That one on that first lap, finding a way past Joe Screen, who must have been the finish of gaps for him to get through. But he's managed to do so, pulling away from Joe now. I think Joe taking things a bit easy. He knows that he has qualified on the back grid as well. They're on the final lap, and what a win here for Thomas would put him on 10 points, and that'd be good enough to put him on the back grid as well. Joe Screen, second place, would put him on 10 points. Chris Louie, well, he could beat both of them if he wins his last race, but Thomas wins heat number 10, his third win in a row. Second place to Joe Screen, third spot to Savalas Fountain, 61.4. That was Thomas's winning time in the crowd, where well, they really have taken to him, giving him a great reception. As we can see again how he just managed to squeeze his way through into first place, getting the better of Joe Screen on his way to his third race victory. And so on to the last qualifying race then, heat number 12, Shane Bowes, he, Shane Parker rather, he comes out in red off gate number one, he's on four points, so he needs something out of this one off gate number two. It is Jeremy Doncaster. Jim, he's had three third places, so he definitely needs to get something in this one. Off gate number three, it is Chris Louis. As we say, a win for Chris to put him in first place out of the qualifying heats. And from the outside, it is Mark Lemon who needs some points in this one. He's only on one, so he definitely needs to win this race if he's going to stand any chance of qualification. So, big race this for all four riders. Heat number 12. is about to get underway Ray Chinnery again trying to pull the riders up into line so the final qualifying heat then is about to get underway heat number 12 as the riders come out of the start and well Chris Lewis showing his class he leads the way from the rider in yellow and black, that is Mark Lemon in second place. Shane Parker only back in third with Jeremy Doncaster at the back. Here comes Parker on the inside of Lemon trying to find a way past the two Australians, backing it out for second place. Meanwhile, Chris Lee, well, he's going to hit the qualifiers here. If he can get this victory in heat number 12, put him on 11 points. Thomas Golub and Joe Screen, they've scored 10 points apiece. Scott Nichols at is on eight, so they're going to be the four that start on the back grid. As Mark Lemon, well, he's going out two wide, it's allowed Shane Parker through in a third place. And with a second spot there for Shane, we put him on six points, the same as Steve Johnson and Mark Lawrence, so that'll put him through on the front grid. And well, it just depends what happens how they decide the last position. As Chris Louis, where well, he's going to get the victory, second place goes to Parker. Third spot to Mark Lemon, Jeremy Doncaster at the back. 
61.8 was Chris's winning time. And we say he makes it through to the final. And well, we understand Jeremy Doncaster, he misses out. He finishes on three. Shane Bowes finishes on two. Mark Lemon finishes on two. Savalas Kelton and Kelvin Tatum, well, they've tied on four apiece, but Kelvin goes through because he had a race victory. And back in the pits, there is Luby after that victory. Thomas next to him in the pits, as you can see. Just working on his machinery, of course, the extra fuel has got to go on. And while well, Scotty Nichols, well, he's doing that with help from his mechanics and Father Tom. And Kelvin Tate, as we say, he's just made it through to the final here beyond the front grid. So was Shane Parker. Now let's go and join Mike Bacon. Got to meet Thomas Golub. Thomas, are you enjoying yourself here tonight? Jak ci się jeździ dzisiaj? Bardzo dobrze. Jestem pierwszy raz w Ipswich i jeżdżę na tym torze. Jest rewelacyjny, bardzo techniczny, bardzo dużo wymagający od oddanego za wynika mam na myśli tor. I'm really enjoying myself. It's my first time in Ipswich and this is a, a track for thinkers and, and I enjoy that kind of racing. When you have to think actually when you what you're doing. You must be used to bigger tracks than this usually. Przyzwyczajony jesteś do dłuższych torów. Na pewno tak, nie robimy to kubo, to mogę jeździć na na krótszych torach, nawet krótszego, krótszy tor od Ipswich. So yeah, I am used to, but I can't say I have a problem with it. Actually, I'm enjoying it. I can even go a little bit shorter than 300 meters in Ipswich. And of course the Grand Prix this year went very well for him. A w Grand Prix wielki sukces. Na pewno tak, nie tylko mój, ale i narodowy. Po 18 latach medal wrócił do Polski. Miejmy nadzieję, że w przyszłym roku będzie jeszcze lepiej. It's not only my success, but only for my country. After 18 years we got the, uh, a medal in a serious uh, individual competition. And, and I'm, I can really hope that's going to be a lot better next season. And of course the 16 lap final to come. Is he looking forward to it? A co powiesz o tym finale 16, 16 do okrążeń? E, nigdzie na świecie nie ma, nie ma takiego finału. Wydaje mi się, że to jest e, bardzo e, dobry finał dla ki, kibiców. I, e, tak, dla tak się składa, że wystartuję dzisiaj pie, po raz pierwszy w swojej karierze w takim finale. Jestem bardzo zadowolony. The fans have been very, very impressed with him. He must be pleased with that. Chodził pomiędzy kibicami i są bardzo podnieceni twoją jazdą. Czy to cię chociaż trochę cieszy, że kibice tak cię przyjmują miło i są tacy wiesz? Na pewno tak. Każdy inny zawodnik z Polski, który tutaj przyjeżdżał, miał kłopoty. Cieszę się, że ja nie mam tych kłopotów i umiem wygrywać na obcym torze. So all I can say that the other Polish riders who were here previously, they didn't quite make it, and I'm happy that I can. Uh, you know, prove that, that there are some Polish riders who can actually do quite well here in Ipswich. Could you thank him very much and hope we see more of him. Dziękujemy i mam nadzieję, do, że zobaczymy Cię jeszcze w przyszłości. Ja mam taką też nadzieję, że w przyszłym roku to pokaże się w Anglii. Because I am hoping to make an appearance in England next year, next jeszcze, season. Jeszcze yeah. chciałbym podziękować e, Tobie, Magdo oraz e, Chrysowi, Luisowi za pożyczenie mi podwozia i skóry, w której się występuje. Bardzo dobrze mi się jeździ. Dziękuję za, 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 you would za like, ten gest. You would like to thank very much, especially Chris, for letting me to buy again his letters and me for all the help, you know, which is my pleasure. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, good to hear from Thomas then, and who knows, he may be back next year at Boxer Week or one of the other elite league teams. And with the riders, they're still getting ready for the 16 lap classic final. Scott Nichols, you can see, working on his machine, putting on that extra fuel tank. Father Tom on hand still, and well, there is Dick Partridge who will be coming out in the mechanics race after the 16 lap classic. Very on so the riders, where well, they're coming out for the consolation final, heat number 13, this one where it sees Savalas Clouting coming out in red off gate number one, off gate two, it is Jeremy Doncaster, off at gate number three we've got Mark Lemon, and from the outside it is Shane Bowes, so these the four riders who've not made it through to the... 16 lap classic sponsored by Tim Woodward
just waiting for Savalas to come back to the line. So the race, well it's about to get underway, the consolation finals, they come out of the start and Donkey, well he's got some lift, Shane Bosley, he's made a pretty good start from the outside and he's come through to lead the way from Savalas Clouton in second place with Mark Lemon in third and Jeremy Doncaster, well he's at the back, Donkey, well he has struggled with injury and flu over the last few weeks of the season and well, I'm sure he'll be quite happy to see it end, although he's trying to find a way past Mark Lemon on the inside, it is still Shane Bowes the uh, Coventry rider who leads away from uh, Paul Savalas Clouting. Mark Lemon of the Pirates back in third ahead of uh, Jeremy Doncaster as they come round to uh, complete the third of the six laps. Bose it is who still leads the way there, Savalas Clouting. Well, he's trying to make a move on the inside, but Shane, well, he's got too much speed for him. Shane, he certainly has improved over the last month or so of the season and well that's four laps gone, two to go he's still out in front from Savalas Kelton with Jeremy Doncaster in th with Mark Lemon rather in third Jeremy Doncaster at the back so the places where they've not changed during the four and a three quarter laps so far as they come around to start the final one and well can Bose hold on for victory he's not had one all evening second place in his second ride that was his best effort for three last places other than that, but it looks like he's going to finish off here at Foxhall Heath with a victory in the consolation final. He wins it indeed from Savalas in second place. Never gave up, but could not close it to him more than a couple of bite lengths. Third spot goes to Mark Lemon. And well, from that body language, I think he's pretty happy he's not out in the 16 lap. Classic coming up. Shane Bowes wins it in a time of 92.9 seconds. Comfortably the slowest time of the year so far. And by the riders now coming out then for the finale. Mark Lauren, as you can see, and we're still able to raise a smile even though he's off the front grid. Shane Parker, well he's also off the front. He scored six points. And well, Chris Louis, or is it? In fact, it could well be Thomas Topinka. Well, in fact it is, because that is Chris, as you can see. He's won this title a couple of times in the past. And well, of course, that is Thomas Golub finishing one point behind Chris in the main event. The riders off the back grid will they score. They have a couple of extra points to go on to their total. So Thomas, well, he's on 12 points, the same as Joe Screen. Scott Nichols is on 10. And Chris Louis, well, he's on 13. But the riders, they get those extra points for having to start at the back. And they're going to have to fight their way through the field. Certainly is always a very thrilling finale. The 16 back Classic 97 about to take place. So the riders, well, they are out at the start line then for the 1997 16 lap Classic final. And uh, this one, well, it sees off the front like row, Mark Lawrence, Steve Johnson, Shane Parker, and uh, Kelvin Tatum, that is Steve Johnson, that is Shane Parker. He's at number three, as you can see. And, well, from the back row, we have got Joe Screen. Next to him, it is Scotty Nichols, then Thomas Pinker, sorry, Thomas Collab on the outside off gate number three and Chris Louie from the wide outside as the riders were settling down for the 1997 Tim Woodward sponsored 16 lap classic will it be between those two riders off gates three and four off the back grid we'll see as the 16 lapper gets underway and when it looks as if Shane Parker has made a good start from the inside indeed he does and well Chris Lewis, in fact he's made up lots of ground already he's come through into fifth place very quickly indeed but it is the rider in yellow and black that is Joe Screen 
it is Mark Lauren rather who's made a good start well Kelvin Tatum rather it is who leads away from Shane Parker in second place Chris Lou well he's come through superbly in the third place already with Mark Lauren back in fourth and we're looking at all the riders coming round as Shane Parker well he's still holding on to second spot and now Chris Lou well he's trying to find a way past on the outside and he's come through superbly into second place Kelvin Tatum it is who still leads way Mark Lauren in third Shane Parker well, he seems to be losing ground Thomas Gollum he's trying to work his way through the field but it is Kelvin Tatum who leads the way from Chris Lou in second place a previous winner of this title with Mark Lom, he's well out there, Scott Nichols, Shane Parker, Steve Johnson, as you can see, Thomas Gollum, well he's trying to make a move as well, trying to find a way past Steve Johnson, on the outside, Chris Lee, it is who leads the way, here comes Gollum, trying to find a way past on the outside, it's all very tight indeed, as they start another lap, and well it is still Kelvin Tatum, who leads the way, from Chris Louie in second place, Louie closing in. Mark Lauren and Shane Parker were there also in hot pursuit. Thomas, Thomas Gollard, well he's also in the thick of the action. So they come round to complete another lap though. It is the rider in yellow and black, that is Chris that is Kelvin Tatum who leads the way with Chris Louie well he's making a move here on the outside in the inside and he's come through in the first place and that could win him this 16 lap classic here this evening he leads the way from Kelvin Tatum in second place Mark Lawrence well he's back in third and well we've lost Scotty Nichols there he's come down Shane Parker having a look behind but meanwhile out in front Chris Louie still leads the way from Kelvin Tatum Mark Lawrence Scotty Nichols Steve Johnson well he's also there so Shane Parker but out in front, it is Chris Louie who leads the way, and this will give him the title. He can stay in this position. Kelvin Tater in second place. He's under pressure, though, from Mark Lorem on the inside, and indeed, Loremski, where well, he's come through now into second place. Seems to be going on forever this race as Chris Lee, well he still leads the way in from Mark Lorem now in second place. Kelvin Tatum, he's dropped back to third and well Thomas Goller in fact he's pulled out of the meeting with engine failure so that really does hand the title to the manual pitcher Chris Lee he leads the way Laransky in second place Kelvin Tatum in third spot having another look behind as Ray Chinnery I think that's the 12th lap they've ridden now as Luby well he's heading towards victory here this evening he was the top qualifier from the heats and it looks if like he's going to win the final as well they're nearly at the end of this Tim Woodward sponsored classic as Chris Lee where he still leads the way Ray Chinnery where he holds up the 12th lap sign as they come round for yet another lap and Chris Lou it is who still leads away and well in fact we, that was in fact the 15th lap we're on the last one now as Louie well he's going to clinch the title from Mark Lorem in second place and Kelvin Tatum well he's back in third but it is Louie who takes the champion flag and he is the champion world well unto him second place in the 16 lap classic goes to Mark Lorem third spot to Kelvin Tatum and well Shane Parker he finishes on in fourth place Steve Johnson fifth just ahead of Scotty Nichols in sixth Joe Screen in seventh Thomas Gollum gets a couple of points in eighth but it is the rider in the red and white helmet colour Chris Lee who is the 1997 16 lap classic winner congratulations to him and coming round for another lap of honour and very well received as well no wonder very popular indeed the skipper of the witches and well another big individual success for him and well getting a great reception from the fans down the back straight as well Chris winning it in a time of 4 minutes 8.6 seconds and well now it'll be on to the presentation which is supporters club 
Rider of the Year, Scotty Nichols. And well, Scotty Nichols, he finishes in third place, receiving his cup from Tim. Same score, 14 points as Neville Tatum, Shane Parker and Thomas Gollum. Steve Johnson and Joe Screen finish on 12 apiece. But Scotty, he gets third place on count back. Second place from Bradford and Suffolk Lad, Mark Loram. And well, Laramski, he finishes in second place on 18 points. So Mark receives his uh, trophy from Tim. And uh, tonight's winner of uh, the 16 lap classic. And uh, a good end to the season for the skipper himself, Chris Lee. And Chris it is who wins the final and finishes with 27 points. A very easy winner indeed of the 1997 16-lap classic. Well done to him. And I think Nigel will be having a few words with him. So uh, just before Chris goes off to the podium to uh, have his photographs and bits and pieces, Chris, tough one. Bloody tough, yeah. Uh, I knew, you know, I mean, my arms, I've, I was struggling a little bit and uh, I knew that all the work had to be done in the first couple of laps because I didn't fancy racing guys with tired arms. So uh, I really put everything in the, the first two or three laps and paid off. And uh, Calvin was, uh, was on a bit of a chase to start with, but uh, I think he sort of got a bit tired towards the end, which made life a little easier for you. Yeah, I had to plan my move on Kelvin because, I mean, it wasn't until about halfway stage anyway that I passed him, and by then I'm, I'm already getting tired, so uh, that was obviously the most difficult pass, and then uh, just hanging on in front of Mark was very difficult. Yeah, so uh, there we are, Chris Louis. So give it up again, ladies and gentlemen, for tonight's trophy winners. Third place, Scott Nichols, Mark Loram, and Chris Louis. So well done to the three of them, and well, the champagne, it looks like that's coming out as well. And Chris, not for the first time in his career, finishing top of the rostrum. And well, the photographers getting smashed as well, as you can see, Tim, well, wow, shouldn't stay there too long. And well, still more action to come. We've got the Paul Osborne Memorial Trophy coming up, the annual mechanics race. Now yeah, I think that's Mark's youngster, Reese. And well, presentation also to Tim from the e Ipswich management. Now oh, I'm sure he's delighted with that, the former team sponsor of the Witches. And well, the riders out on the Victory Parade vehicle then. A lot of supporters have stayed behind to cheer on their heroes. Chris Louis the winner then. Mark Lauren second. And Mark and Scott Nichols third. And well, it seems to have got a few extra visitors as well onto the parade vehicle. So congratulations to Chris. And well, now it is on to the mechanics race and well before that what have we got here that's Bob Ellis the track curator here at Foxhall Heath who su supplied such good racing strip all season just taking his final checkered flag of the 1997 no doubt he'll be back next year as the riders when they get ready for this Paul Osborne Memorial Trophy Paul of course who Sadly killed several years ago now. A mechanic here for many seasons. And with this memorial trophy put up in his honour each year for the mechanics. So heat number one with this one it sees Roy Leach in red and blue. It is Mark Scopes in white. Dick Partridge in yellow and black. Jason Green. And well in fact it is the rider in blue. That is Mark Scopes who leads the way from Jason. Jason Reed in fact in second place with Dick Partridge in third and Roy Leach at the back so we've got the top two going through to the final from each semi and well it looks as if Mark Scopes is going to book his place and they're going to pretty fair lick as well any of you who have ridden a speed or have not ridden a speedway machine won't fully appreciate how difficult it is 
as Mark will in fact he's had engine failure so he's left Jason Reed out in front from Dick Partridge in second place Dick of course who helps Chris Louie out this season Jason well I think he's been helping Shane Parker out on occasions and uh, he leads the way they're on the final lap and he's built up quite a lead over Dick in second place with Roy Leach in third Jason a former rider I think from many years ago and where he gets the win a junior rider second place goes to Dick Partridge third spot to Roy Leach Shane Parker doing the honours here this evening and so the Dick and Jason where they put their place through to the final Jason winning the first race Seventy four point nine seconds, certainly not a bad time either in heat number one. So the riders coming out then for the second heat and well it seems we've got five riders coming out in this one. We've got Nigel Birch of course well known as the one of the track presenters. He's off gate number one, former grass tracker off gate number two. It is Kevin Howes, he mechanics with Kelvin Tatum. Off gate number three, we've got Jerry Thompson. And off gate number four, we've got Nigel Wells, Chris Lewis mechanic. We've also got Tommy Nichols in there as well. And well, we think Tommy's on a scooter, a moped, he's at the back in this one. That's not surprising. And well, there is Nigel Wells, better known as Slingshot. Well, he's in second place, Kevin Howes. Well, he's away and leading from Slingshot in second place with Nigel Birch back in third. They're in a cracking battle here for second place. And in fact, Kevin Howes, well, he cannot go through to the final because he's not an Ipswich mechanic. So really the battle going on between these two. Slingshot on the outside. You see Nigel Birch on the inside and well, Birchie finding his way through into first place and well the mechanics they certainly do take this very seriously indeed Slink well he's on one of Chris Lewis prepared engines I think he's been working on it all week as Slingshot as Kevin Hales well he's on Kelvin Tatum's machine and his levers as well as you can see and well he's going to get the victory Nigel Birch and Nigel Wells over there still having a good battle for second and third but it looks like both of those two are going to make it through to the final to join Jason and Dick as Kevin Howes where he wins it Chris Louie the man with a chequered flag this time around sees his man qualify for the final in third place and it is the rider there Kevin Howes who wins the second mechanics race but as we say he was he's ineligible ineligible for the final and his winning time 74.8 seconds and so on to the final then and this one where it sees Nigel Wells off gate number four on his specially tuned Chris Louie engine off gate number three it is Nigel Birch off gate number two Dick Partridge and from the inside it is Jason Reed. so we're soon going to find out the destination of the Paul Osborne Memorial Trophy for 1997 as the race where it's about to get underway as they come out of the start and well in fact it looks as if Slingshot has shot out of the gate indeed he has and he leads the way Jason Reed gets in all sorts of problems and with Dick Partridge he's come through into second place Nigel Birch he's at the back but Slingshot it is who was out like an arrow in the final and for the start and he leads the way from Jason Reed now come back and through in the second place Dick Partridge in third and Nigel Birch he's at the back so Sling well he's been trying for about 10 years to win this mechanics race here at Ipswich and well is he going to do it or will Jason Reed find a way through on the inside a couple of laps gone and Sling it is who's still out in front he's followed Chris Lee all over the world as his mechanic and well now it's his moment of glory possibly 
with just over a lap to go. He's out in front. Jason Reed in second place. Dick Partridge in third. Nigel Birch. He's at the back. But Slingshot it is who leads the way. And well, oh, steady on. He's got a touch of the wobbles as they come round to complete the Paul Rosberg Memorial Trophy final. And is Sling going to hold on it? Looks as if he will. So they cross the line. He just gets the win from a fast finishing Jason Reed. Third spot goes to Dick Partridge with Nigel Birch in full 76.7. That was Sling's winning time, and well, well done to him. He is the winner of the Paul Osborne Memorial Trophy, Nigel Slingshot Wells. And well, congratulations to him. And well, he's tried for many years, as we say, to win this tide, to win the mechanics race, and he's finally done it. Well done, Sling. And well, as you can see, there's a bit of a welcoming committee for him. Ah, well, you think he's won the world final? Just look at this, the bumps for Sling. Ah, well, I think it's all a bit much for him. Ah, well, his, his sidekick Nick Bloom thanking it, congratulating him as well. So is Chris, of course, his main man Richard Arbon as well. And well, it really was a great performance by Sling in the final. And well, he's over to receive his trophy from Straub, another famous mechanic who, well, he doesn't do too many mechanics races to Straub, but I think you can see the reason why. And well, congratulations to Sling and the winner of this 1997 Paul Osborne Memorial Trophy. And well, Chris telling him that he's got to take his helmet off for the photographs. Bit of a oh, and the sponsors cap as well what a professional and just after the meeting we had a few words with sling <laughs> well Nigel, 10 long years in the pits 10 long years having a go at this mechanics race and you've finally done it how does it feel oh good mate i really wanted it so uh pleased with that well i, I know for a fact that the boys uh been really trying to do this for 10 years and I for one am very glad to see him do it. Did, uh, did you feel the pressure getting to you when he was catching you up towards the finish? Was, was you getting a bit nervous? Uh, well I thought they were there all the time so because uh, you know there's shadows everywhere so uh, I just thought, thought after three laps I thought this is it someone's going to come past and we'll blow it again but I think luckily they didn't so. Well we're all worried for you but uh, tell us Nigel one thing we've noticed for all your mechanics races is uh, your superb technique from the start. How do you do it? Uh, I don't know, it's just a knack. You, are, you could learn something off me, I reckon. I intend to study the videos very closely. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations to Nigel then. And well, as Chris receives his end of season awards, he won't be there for the dinner and dance. We hope you've enjoyed it this season. Until next year, it's goodbye from Foxhall Heath. Goodbye from Rerun Videos.